Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. I am very happy that I have the chance and the opportunity to be part of your Sabbath service this morning. And I am so glad and I praise the Lord that I have the chance to serve my home church where I grew up, Mamsi Church, the Manila Adventist Medical Center Church. Our story this morning for our children's homily is entitled, The Boy Who Read With His Fingertips. Can you imagine opening your eyes and seeing nothing but darkness, even in daylight? Darkness everywhere, all the time? Born in a small French village outside Paris, Louis Braille went blind at the age of three accidentally injuring himself while playing with his father's tools. This was a time before seeing eye dogs or books for the blind. If they were lucky, blind people might learn a trade. More often, they were doomed to begging on the streets. It was unusual for a blind child to attend school. Yet, when a kindly minister convinced the local teacher to take Luis as a student, the youngster soon was at the head of his class. In 1819, Louise went to live and study at the National Institute for the Blind in Paris, where he stayed for the rest of his life. Louise Braille became a blessing for blind people around the world. With his one invention, Louise improved forever the lives of blind people, and he did so at the tender age of 15. Let me share to you his story. Seven-year-old Louis tapped his wooden cane on the cobblestones as he felt his way up the hilly street. He was on his way to see his friend, Minister Paloy. The minister lived in the house next to the old village church. Using the cane his father had made, Louis felt proud that he was walking by himself. While walking, he recalled the accident that had blinded him several years earlier. He had been playing with leather scraps on the floor of his father's harness shop. His father had warned him never to touch the sharp tools hanging high above his head. That day, a customer came in and distracted Luis's father's attention. Luis gazed up at the shiny tools, wondering if he could punch holes into the leather the way his father did. The urge grew irresistible. Climbing into the work table, he unhooked a tool from the wall. Suddenly, he missed his step, and as he fell to the floor, the tool stabbed his eye. His parents rushed him to a local healer who treated and then bandaged the bloody eye. Unfortunately, both eyes became infected. One morning, several days after the accident, Luis awoke to a world of darkness had gone completely blind. While recalling the accident, Luis could tell that he had reached the top of the hill when he felt the street grow level beneath his feet. He walked further until sounds made by his tapping cane told him that he'd reached the iron gate of Minister Paloui's home. Minister Paloui answered his knock on the door. Welcome, Luis. I've been expecting you. With his left hand on the minister's arm, Luis accompanied Minister Paloy into the carpeted study and sat down beside him. I got here all by myself, Luis said proudly. I looked with my ears and my feet and my cane. You're a brave boy, Luis, and God is with you, replied Minister Paloy. Luis lowered his head. Yes, minister, he said, but sometimes I feel very lonely. I understand, the minister said, but you are doing well at school. I hear good reports from your teacher. Yes, he said. A smile quickly replaced his downcast look. I like school very much. A kind girl reads me the text each day, and I listen carefully to what the teacher says. You use your memory well, even though you cannot read. Luis again looked sad for a moment and then asked, Can you tell me if there are any books in this room, Minister? 
Why, yes, Louise. There are many books that I've collected from my studies. The minister stood up. Come, I'll show you. He guided Louise to a large wooden bookcase. Louise reached out both hands and began touching the books. He caressed the spines and the soft covers. He pulled the books close to his nose and sniffed the leather covers and the musty pages. Taking a book off the shelf, he opened it and ran his fingers over the page. Suddenly, he spread wide his arms and embraced as many books as he could reach. Minister, I love books, he cried. I want to read them all. Minister Paloy looked thoughtfully at Louise. Come, sit and pray with me, my son. Lord, said Minister Paloy, you know every hair on Louise's head. You know how brave he is about his blindness and about the bullies who tease him. Bless him for his courage. Continue to bless his studies in school. And I pray that one day you will show him a way to read the books he loves so dearly. Louise's sightless eyes filled with tears. Oh yes, Lord, it is my heart's desire, he whispered. After a short while, the minister's face lit up and he gently touched Louise's arm. Louise, I believe God will use your blindness for his glory and the good of mankind. That evening before dinner, Louise sat by the fireplace singing a song he had learned at school. A delicious aroma began to fill the house. He grinned as he recognized the smell. Chicken stew, Mama! My favorite! Even though it was past working hours, Louise could hear his father hammering in the workshop. He walked to the door and called out, What are you doing, Papa? His father continued hammering for a few moments before answering. I've made something for you, Louise, he replied, walking over and handing his son a square piece of wood. Louise ran his fingers over the board. There are nails all over it, Papa, Louise said. I count 16. What are they for? His father smiled and ruffled Louise's curly hair. I just thought the nails would be fun for you. Maybe you can make up a new game. The family said grace at the dinner table and dug into the chicken stew. Louise's older brother, Henry, sat opposite him. What Bible story do you want me to read you tonight, Louise? He asked. Louise thought for a moment. I'd like the story about Joseph and his coat of many colors, he exclaimed. I get to imagine what all the colors look like. It's one of my favorite stories too, said Mother. What else do you like about it? That Joseph was the littlest one of all, but he ended up helping everybody. At the age of 10, Louise went to live and attend classes at the National Institute for the Blind in Paris. One day, after he'd been at the Institute for five years, Louise was daydreaming during history class. Louise, exclaimed the teacher, why are you not answering my question? What are you thinking about this time? Aroused from his daydream, Louise said, I'm sorry, Monsieur Zillet. What did you ask? Please stay after class, Louise, said Monsieur Zillet. I want to speak to you. After the rest of the students had left the classroom, Louise stood by the teacher's desk. Louise, this is not like you, this daydreaming you have been doing lately, said Monsieur Zillet. You are 15, too old for daydreaming, he peered more closely at Louise's tired face. What are you doing that leaves you so exhausted? Louise's head dropped sadly. I've been trying to figure out how we blind people might be able to read, he said. Night after night, I experiment with different touch patterns for the alphabet, but nothing works. The patterns are too complicated for my fingers to remember. Monsieur Zillet frowned. Louise, you should concentrate what blind people are capable of doing. Reading is not important for the blind. Learning a trade that allows you to support yourself with your blindness, that's what's important. Louis shuffled back to his dormitory room half-heartedly tapping his cane in front of him. Maybe Monsieur Zilla is right, he thought. Maybe it's just a waste of time. 
Later that night, Louis sat at his desk, overwhelmed by feelings of discouragement. I've been working on this problem for over a year, he thought. How can I simplify the code? Into his despair crept a memory of what Minister Paloy had told him years ago. I believe God will use your blindness for His glory and for the good of mankind. Luis got down on his knees by his bed. Please help me, God, he prayed. Show me how blind people can read. Then, as he lay in bed, trying to fall asleep, a new idea sparked fire in his mind. He jumped out of bed and grabbed the wooden board and pointed metal stick with which he'd been working on. Quickly, he spread a fresh sheet of paper over the board. What if I make two rows of three dots each, he thought. Louise rapidly punched the holes in the paper with a stylus, creating several tiny patterns. Then he turned the paper over and ran his fingertips across the raised box. Yes, he whispered. These patterns are small enough for my fingertips to read quickly. Experimenting some more, he gave a different six-dot code to each letter of the alphabet. He worked feverishly until he had captured the entire alphabet. Now, he said aloud, let me try writing my name. Louise punched in the code for his name and hurriedly ran his fingers over the bumps. Louise Braille, he shouted. I've done it. I can read with my fingers. Oh, thank you, God, for answering my prayers. Now many fingers will see. Now light will fill the darkness. In the summer of 1824, when he was 15, Luis invented what became known as the Braille System. Worldwide libraries for the blind now use his universal language of raised dots on paper. The ability to read and write opened doors for blind persons to share in the written wealth of human learning. I hope you were blessed and inspired by the story of the life of Luis Braille. Indeed, his life is a testimony that God answers prayers. Again, happy Sabbath everyone! Bye!